everybody. Good morning. Pastor John here from New Life Church in Owaco, Washington, and this is the message for Sunday, March 19th, 2023. Now, two weeks ago, we started talking about revival. We were talking about some of the revivals that have been going on across our nation and around the world, and we talked about how some of those revivals began. Uh, included in that was a, a message from 2 Chronicles 7.14, which says, Then if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will restore their land. And that restoring the land uh, part was something that we focused on. That's a big part of revival. But uh, the point of revival is to bring us closer to God, to understand what his plans are for us, to know what he wants us to do and, and how we can be obedient to him. And if we are, that will restore our land because we'll be able to convey the message of the gospel to many people who need to hear it. And last week, we focused on prayer. We talked about the importance of keeping God as Lord of your life and not allowing yourself to try to be elevated above God. It's important to keep him first and that we have to humble ourselves. And that's that first piece of humbling ourselves by having humility, setting him above us. Today we're going to take the concept of humility or humbling ourselves, and we're going to take it just a little bit further. Today we're going to be looking at how we, as a people, should be turning from our wicked ways. Well, you say, well, Pastor, I, I ain't got no wicked ways. Oh, well, good for you, Mr. Plank in the Eye. But if that's the way you feel, then I still need you to, to stay with me today, because there's more to this message than that. And it talks about us being a good family for one another, and you need to be part of that. So let's get started with this initial concept of turning from our wicked ways. And for that, uh, 2 Chronicles again tells us to humble ourselves. And, and we talked about that piece last week, but in this concept of turning from our wicked ways, for some of us, for some of us, that's an easy thing to do. But for others, it's easier said than done. Now, perhaps you have fantastic self-discipline. And if the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, then you're able to just leave behind whatever he told you not to do and go do what he tells you to do. And for you, turning from your wicked ways might be a really easy thing to do. And if so, I encourage you to seek the Holy Spirit and ask him what areas of your life still need to be brought into submission to him. And understand, it may not be wicked things. Uh, it, it may not be that you need to leave behind some secret life of sin, but instead understanding that there may be other things that the Holy Spirit needs to do to call you deeper. So, now, what Scripture calls sin is sin. Let's, let's be plain about that. If Scripture calls it a sin, it's a sin. And, and you may be thinking, well, I don't have this secret sin life. But if the Holy Spirit is calling you deeper into obedience, that might include allowing Him to make further renovation to other aspects of your heart and your character. Uh, there could be a specific character trait that He wants you to work on something he wants you to modify. Perhaps he is convicting you about your temper or uh, maybe even your health, possibly your diet, your exercise, your fitness. Those may be things that he's talking to you about. And maybe, maybe it's something as simple as how you use your free time. Again, it may not necessarily be sin. It's just something simple that the Holy Spirit wants you to modify so that you will be better prepared to serve the kingdom or so that you will be drawn closer to the Lord. Or it could just be simple obedience. For example, when I was in high school, uh, I once felt a very strong direction from the Holy Spirit to modify my peer group. Now understand, I wasn't hanging around with a bad crowd. It wasn't like the kids that I, were hang, I was hanging out with were, were bad kids or anything. But the Lord asked me to specifically dedicate a certain amount of time every day to a certain peer group who would encourage me and help me walk closer to the Lord. 
And I did that. And what I found is that I was strengthened and encouraged by these other people to maintain my walk with Christ. My obedience to the Holy Spirit ultimately provided me with a tremendous foundation in a place of strength so that I was better equipped to minister to the other friends that I had. And when I returned to them when the time was right, I did so from a place of strength. I was ready to provide them with something directly from the gospel because of the time that I had spent with Christian friends. And that was just a direction of the Holy Spirit. Now, my story provides something of a framework for where I think we really need to dig deep today. And for that, we go to Galatians 6. So in Galatians 6, starting in verse 1, <clears throat> excuse me, it says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now I mentioned that some of you may have incredible self-discipline and self-control. You may be able to leave behind your wicked ways like that and never return. But for others, it may be about having the right motivation. Perhaps your love for a family member is the inspiration that you need to leave behind a simple behavior or possibly even addiction. But not everyone can do it by themselves. They may need help. And this is... This is the person that I'm describing here who says, when it says, brothers and sisters, if someone's caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. We may need to come alongside someone and, and help that person leave behind whatever could potentially destroy them. Now, I know it's hard because as Second Chronicles 7 said, we have to humble ourselves. But that's not something that's easily done in our culture. In our culture, not all of us are quick to admit that we need help, and even less are willing to ask for help. We, for some reason, seem to be embarrassed by that. We're self-conscious, we're ashamed. We feel like somehow asking for help means that we're weaker. But yet, Scripture tells us, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. There's no way the rest of us are going to know that you need help unless you ask for it. And listen, the rest of us don't have it all figured out either. Look at the rest of the scripture, verse 3. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they're deceiving themselves. Each one should test their own actions. They can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. And then verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh they will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit, they will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, we have the opportunity. Let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. This garden that we're growing, we're growing it together. Now, there's aspects of this that are true totally to self. Uh, we are not going to be judged for the actions of others. We are judged based on our own actions. What we sow is what we reap. But collectively, as the body of Christ, we're all sowing and we're all reaping. And ultimately, we're all reaping together. And so we need to sow to please the Spirit. If we do, we're, we will uh, all at some point reap eternal life. But now a moment ago, I suggested to you that the person who, who doesn't have self-discipline or, or doesn't have self-control to turn from their wicked ways, that they might need help, but they aren't sure how to ask for it. And honestly, they may be embarrassed to ask for it. They may be unwilling to confess their sin. 
My encouragement to you this morning is, is that you not be. Don't be self-conscious about that. Listen, all of us have been there. Literally, all of us. Romans 3, 23 and 24. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. All of us were in sin. But now we know Christ. And we were all saved by his grace. Not from some great work that we did on our own. Not from some fantastic deeds that made us somehow holy. No. We are justified by God through Christ and that's the only way that any of us ever know salvation. If you're struggling with sin, if you haven't yet put your faith and your trust in Jesus, let me be first to tell you that you can do that. And we've all been there. And that's why you shouldn't be embarrassed at all. Because we know what it was like. We're not judging you. Instead, we want to help you. We want to give you the hand up that you need to be able to walk in Christ. All of us have sinned. All of us need a Savior. And we all receive that salvation from the same source, Jesus Christ. Now, God's instruction was that we carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus told us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul, but he also said, love your neighbor as yourself. I want you to ask yourself today, if you were walking through a season of self-harm or addiction or some other thing that was really holding you back from being able to fully be obedient to the Holy Spirit and, and you needed help with that, wouldn't you want somebody to help you? So those of you who have experienced freedom through Christ, you have a responsibility now to bring that truth to others to carry each other's burdens. And that takes on a lot of forms. Some of us need to pray for our friends. That may be the only support that they need. They say, hey, just pray for me. I know I can do this if you're praying for me. I just need God's help. Some of us should be serving as accountability partners, checking in with our friends on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis making sure that they're taking the right steps and that they're constantly moving closer to what the Holy Spirit has for them, helping them to overcome the stumbling blocks that could potentially result in destructive patterns of behavior. But some of us need to take a much more proactive stance and help people overcome their sin. That may mean helping them get to counseling or rehab or possibly even taking them from where you are now to a teen challenge center for men or women so that they can ultimately gain the self-control and the self-discipline that they need to leave behind their addiction for forever. Organizations like Teen Challenge boast incredible success rates, sometimes in excess of 80% of the people who enter those programs and complete never return to the lifestyle that was destructive to them in the past. Well, the reason for that is because those individuals are not pointed as into some kind of a rehab. What they are shown is that they need to bring their life into submission to Jesus Christ. And some of us, we just need to be encouraging, daily sharing the truth from God's Word to help our friend overcome in the situation that they find themselves in. Or we might simply need to find to provide a place of sanctuary, a refuge, a place where it's okay and safe to cry and to be remorseful without fear of judgment or without fear that they're going to be gossiped about. See, God's calling us to a lot of different things, but all of us have a responsibility in this. We all have a responsibility to be humble, to leave behind a life of sin and to turn from our wicked ways. For some of you, that may be easy. For some of you, you may have done that a long time ago. But what you need to do now is make sure that your family of Christ is able to move and walk in freedom. Help them take the necessary steps, whether it's little things like praying for them or encouraging them, or whether you need to really get involved and have a hands-on approach as an accountability partner or possibly even taking them somewhere or providing the financial means 
so that they could attend a program like Team Challenge. I'm just using Team Challenge as an example. There's others out there that are great and Christ-centered, but that's the key. It's got to be centered and focused on Christ. We ultimately are all saved by His grace and His grace alone. And that's how we come to do that is through Christ, not through anything of our own. So this humbling part, this humility, it may be that we have to ask for help. That may be the humble part that we have to do. Or maybe the humility comes in realizing that we're not perfect and we were all there. We've all sinned and we all fall short. And we have a responsibility to help others seek and know real lasting freedom through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for those who've watched today. And I ask that your words uh, just be able to be planted into their heart today and to grow into something that produces a great harvest. We all ultimately need to leave behind our wicked ways to seek your face. That's the only way we're going to know revival. But Lord, as this message goes forth, I ask Holy Spirit that you allow it to grow in each individual so that they recognize that they may have to bring some part of their life into submission to you, or they may have a responsibility right now to be an accountability partner for someone else. Give them the wisdom and the discernment that they need, Lord, to follow you, to trust you, Holy Spirit, and to walk according to your instructions and be obedient to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I hope you'll be back with us next week.